Programmers like to ask me questions, which is fun because I like answering questions. And the answer is almost always, use Postgres. Just use Postgres, friend. You just have to learn a few things and <laughs> it's amazing how many problems it'll solve for you. Let's consider one of the big ones that I've tackled using Postgres. I saved myself hundreds of lines of code just using Postgres. I actually was on a project at Microsoft called Learn TV where I had to build a scheduling backend that looks something like this. It's changed a little bit over time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the problem using Cloudflare TV uh, because it's got a scheduler right here, right here that we can see and understand. Well, I don't know if you've ever had to create a scheduler or a calendar like this, but it's actually a pretty difficult one. As you can see, there's lots of events and they're fit into little time slots in here. And these time slots have rules and let's go over those rules. Number one, start time of those time slots needs to be at the top or the bottom of the hour. That's at zero or 30 minutes past. Um, same with the end time. The duration needs to be 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes. That was a constraint that I lived by. No show that we had or no program that we had would go past two hours. And finally, and probably the biggest one, no overlap. <laughs> okay, so here's what I need you to do. Think about your domain model and the code that you would write to ensure that a program that's being scheduled fits these constraints. Go ahead, ponder it. Think about how many lines, how many classes, and so on. And now we're gonna do this with Postgres, shall we? Before we continue on, time for a shameless plug. I have written books and done courses on Postgres and databases in general. I invite you to go have a look at bigmachine.io. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and you can scan through here and see the goodies that I have. I even have a full course that goes along with this book, which you can also do if you don't want to have this whole book is you can go visit my free eBooks here that I have. Uh, one is called the little SQL eBook. And if you want to download it, you can just fill out this little form and you can learn all about SQL for free this weekend. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my table. And like any good Postgres programmer, I start with a drop statement. <laughs> drop table if exists, and I'm gonna call mine programs. That's all. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna create a script and I want that script to run every single time without a problem. That's a fun word, a good word for today called idempotent. I hate that word, it's really horrible. Anyway, it just means you can rerun a script over and over again. Then we're gonna do create table programs. All right. Let's get to the next thing here. We're gonna do start at, and this is going to be timestamp TZ. Hopefully you watched my last video on dates and times. Uh, we want a time zone in here for sure, not null. And then we're gonna do end at timestamp TZ. Again, not null. Groovy, we have ourselves a table. Unfortunately, it is absolutely not functional. <laughs> I would never trust this table at all because the only constraints we have, well, we have a primary key constraint, and we have a not null constraint, which is great. Uh, we have timestamps, which is neato, but we don't have any guarantees as far as the dates and times that go in there. We can add that now using what's called a check constraint. So to do that, I can put check, and then I can say, I wanna have the minutes of this value right here, start out, I wanna have the minutes, and I wanna make sure that they're in a certain range. So what I can do is I can say, give me the date part. And I want the minute from here, please, thank you. And then I'm gonna tell it what field, start at, which you have to specify again. Now, I wanna make sure that this value is in a range, and that range is gonna be 0, 0, and 30. I'm giving back numbers from date part when I ask for a minute. I'm giving back integers, that's what they are, and I wanna make sure they're in a range. All right, well, that is my check. Let's check our parentheses, it looks good and we can leave it just like that for now. All right, well, let's make sure that everything works as intended. Yeah, man, I can't believe it. That's twice now I've got it in a first shot. So let's insert some values in here. We're gonna do insert into programs, and then we're gonna set this to now. Now it's going to pop in the current timestamp, which, well, it's not the top or the bottom of the hour, I'll tell you that. Um, and then for the end, I wanna just pop in 30 minutes later. And here's a fun little trick with Postgres. You can concatenate in an interval. I can say 30, whoops, 30 minutes. And Postgres will look at that line of text and say, oh, that is an interval that I'm going to add to this uh, timestamp. Isn't that neat? Isn't Postgres fun? Okay, so here we're gonna get the problem that we expect. Violates a check constraint. Start at check. 
radical. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 2022, that's that. So another thing to notice in here, PostQuest is smart enough to see these string values and translate them for us on the fly because it knows that this is a timestamp TZ. Now if I execute this, whoop, whoop, we're in there. Our check constraint is past uh, top and the bottom of the hour. That's exciting. All right, we know it works, so let's go over here and I'm gonna add the same check constraint to end at and make sure we have end at here. Boom, good. All right, so let's make sure that all of this works the way we expect. I'm gonna hit Control A, execute selection, awesome. Uh, if you wanna know, I'm working with Postico, which is a GUI tool for Postgres on the Mac. You know what we just did? We just got rid of these two problems right there. Isn't that fun? With just a couple lines, not even lines of Postgres. See, I already told you, I like to have these on the same line, so that doesn't count as line of code, does it? If you put it all on the same line, if you are a Postgres fan or a database fan, you might be looking at this going, do we really need two columns in here? And the answer is no, we don't. <laughs> this is really fun. Not a lot of people know this. Did you know that Postgres has what's called ranges? You can have ranges of all kinds of things, integers, uh, end times, and dates. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a single field here called slot. And this is going to be a TSTZ range get used to this stuff, I promise. And then we're gonna leave things just the way it is right now because I wanna make sure that I can add stuff in and then I'm gonna build in some constraints. All right, so the first thing that I need to do, of course, is I need to come in here and I need to change this. And you might be thinking, how in the world do you add values to this? This looks strange. I'm gonna just tell you right now, this looks a little strange, but what you need to do is you need to pass in a string, and that string needs to represent those time values. And now I know for a lot of people looking at this, you're gonna say, Rob, are you insane? I don't know, maybe. So let's execute this. Wow, I am on a roll. So now we have a proper range, which for data people out there, that makes sense. All right, let's add some constraints. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it's not null. So we know what not null does. We can just leave this the way it is. Uh, but the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we start and stop at the top and the bottom of the hour. So if I do this, as you can see, this is still gonna work and I don't want that to work. So how do I fix that? Well, I do my old check constraints again, but this one's gonna be a little bit different. In fact, it involves some extra code in here, but what I'm gonna do is I am going to write a check constraint. This check is once again gonna check the date part and I wanna check the minute just like I did before, but what exactly am I gonna check? Well, when you're using ranges, you have uh, these special little keywords, lower and upper. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with lower and upper, and I'm not gonna go too deeply into ranges, but right now I'm gonna check the lower slot is in, once again, 0030. And I wanna make sure that the upper slot is also in there, but how do I put these things together? And the answer is I do it with the and keyword. This is what's called a predicate. This is a truthy uh, expression. That's how check constraints work. You write an expression, it's called a predicate, returns true or false, and if it's false, well, Postgres throws. So I need to check the upper slot is also in there. I don't know, man, I'm on a roll. You think I'm gonna be able to keep going with this and get this thing right? Yep. All right, admit it, this is pretty neat. Even if you're a hardcore coder person, uh, I mean, how much code have we saved here? All right, before I gloat too much, let's go in here and fix our timestamps and make sure that we can actually save the data we want, and indeed we can. All right, two requirements down. What about this third one, or duration? It needs to be within 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes. Well, I could add another uh, value in here in our predicate, and I could say, well, calculate the duration and make sure that it's in this range. However, I wanna be even trickier. I am going to use a brand new column and I'm gonna call this duration because hey, we're gonna to wanna to see the duration of our program probably. Uh, unfortunately, duration is a calculated thing, but if you read my blog or follow along in this YouTube channel, you know I am a fan of generated columns. In fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create this as a generated column because what that does is it calculates things on the fly and actually stores it in the table. It's meant to denormalize things a little bit, um, kind of acts as a bit of a trigger, not a trigger, whatever. You don't need to worry about it. <laughs> you don't need to add things to it. It's just always there generating on the fly. So we're gonna do generated always as, and this is just how Postgres does things. 
And then before we do anything else, we need to add our stored keyword. In here, we just need to have the expression uh, that we're going to use to generate this column. Okay, so what's our expression gonna be? Well, I need to take the upper slot and I need to subtract it from the lower slot. There we are. So let's just make sure that this works. Let's see what we have. And I am going to do what I've been doing, execute my selection, and you can see we get an error. Uh, duration is an integer, uh, but the expression itself is returning what's called an interval, which makes sense because uh, the uh, range we have here is time zone timestamp. And when you do subtractions or additions, whatever you get back a data type of interval, that's not gonna work for us. What I need to do is I need to transform those values from upper slot minus lower slot. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna return some integer value uh, I think it's gonna be milliseconds. I'm not entirely sure, I can't remember. <laughs> so let's execute this and see what we get back. And what I'll do down here is I'll just say select star from programs, it's just so we can see what the return is. So what this value is right here is a number of seconds. That's what Epic is returning to us. The number of seconds uh, between the upper and lower bounds of our range. So what I want back is the minutes. And so to get the minutes from the seconds, I'm just gonna divide by 60. So let's do this all again, good. So now we know this is 60 minutes. Groovy, we have a duration, 60 minutes, that's exactly what it should be. Now comes the real fun part. Do you think I can put a check constraint on our generated column? <laughs> I think I can. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to check and I'm going to make sure that the duration is in 30, 60, 90, and 120. You think that's gonna work? Let's see if it works. And I am going to run this. It does, it works. Let's triple check and make double sure. Triple check, make double sure. Boom, that we uh, violate that duration check if we have something that goes over the time range. <laughs> this last requirement, this one's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Can Postgres tell us if the range that we want to insert overlaps an existing one? Hmm. Now. My first reaction almost always is, it's Postgres, of course it can. But then what we're asking it to do is kind of a hairy problem. If I was to write code to do this, I would probably run a query and say, hey, uh, give me every single value out and I need to loop over them and make sure that the start and end dates don't overlap. Thankfully, Postgres gives us a way to do constraints on an entire table as well as an individual column. For instance, if I wanted the name here to be unique, I could just say unique, that's a unique constraint and Postgres will check this name value against the rest of the table. So we know that we have table-based constraints as opposed to single row constraints, which is what a check constraint is. This checks just this row, that's all it does. So you might think we should be able to come in here and just do unique, don't you think? Eh, we could, but that doesn't check for overlap. Uh, it might check to make sure that this exact start and end time don't exist somewhere else, but it's not gonna check overlap. So how can we do that? <laughs> For this, we have uh, a generalized table-based constraint called exclude. This is going to tell Postgres to exclude data based on an expression. So without going too deeply into it, exclude will compare two rows. Uh, just like sort in JavaScript or any other language will compare two values and sort things uh, in a faster way. It's still gonna have to go back and check the entire set, but it does things faster under the hood. In fact, if we wanna speed it up, we can have it use uh, index. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It's gonna use an index to run the comparison on the table already. So this is gonna look a little crazy, but we're gonna do uh, exclude using gist where we say the slot with and, <laughs> double and, Basically, this notation right here is saying check slot using the gist index and make sure it doesn't overlap anything else using double ampersand. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to pop a comment here and there we are. <laughs> I think that's neat. So now we can make sure that nothing overlaps. Or can we? Let's see, values here I'm going to so here we're gonna try and insert two rows. The first one starts at one, ends at two. Second one starts at 130, ends at 230. I shouldn't be able to do this. I shouldn't be able to do this given my uh, exclusion constraint. Let's run it. Look at that. It violates exclusion constraint. Boom, Postgres. You gotta love it. 
So we have just handled no overlap. I don't know. What do you think, friends? Is it worth it to learn a little funky syntax <laughs> and erase a ton of code out of your application and to guarantee the data in your table is correct? Hmm. I think it is. Postgres is wonderful. See, use Postgres. It's almost always the answer. All right, well, let's end on a happy note and make sure that we do not have any overlapping programs. So I'm going to come in here and set the date to later and run that and it works. How excited are we? Are we excited? I think we're excited. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you again soon.